I'm sure that these guys, especially considering they're a gay couple, probably not the most conservative and definitely not pro-life considering their stance on the abortion thing. And yet it's these uber-liberal homosexual men that are actually treating this woman exactly the way that every leftist accuses conservative men of treating women. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we have a story from the Centers for Bioethics and Culture. Boy, they've got to get a snap of your name. Uh, but the Centers for Bioethics and Culture, they had this story about a surrogate parent and basically a surrogacy gone wrong. So for those of you who don't know, I know most of you probably do, but surrogacy is essentially where there is a couple that is infertile or, or some way, in some way unable to produce a baby themselves. And so what they will do is they will reach out to somebody that has a functioning womb and they will either uh, do an, IF, uh, an IVF where they insert a fertilized egg with both of their DNA into somebody, or they will take a, a sperm sample and they will insert that into the woman and then her egg will accept the sperm and then creates a pregnancy. And then nine months later, you have a baby. And so they're basically renting out the woman's womb uh, as a way to have a baby when they can't do it by other means. So that's the whole process of surrogacy. And we'll look into this particular story and you'll see some of the problems that that can, that can really arise from that. So first of all, I will say before we get into it, I'm going to try to set the table here. This really shows and underscores the sort of paganistic and self-centered mindset of a lot of the people in the pro-abortion camp. And I'm not saying that every person that is in favor of that is, although a lot of them are, a lot more of them than we would like to believe. But they have been taken over by this rival religion, this paganistic ideology that basically places them and their needs and their wants at the center of the universe. And this is a very large, glaring example of that. So let's go ahead and dig into this story. And we'll go ahead and start by reading the story from the Centers for Bioethics and Culture. So this is starting in the middle of the article here. However, this surrogate pregnancy had taken a dramatic turn for the worst because her second trimester, she was diagnosed with aggressive metatastic, uh, yeah, metatastic breast cancer. The problem facing her niece, she explained, was if she consented to treatment directed at her cancer, she would be required to terminate the pregnancy because the cancer therapy would be harmful to a developing 24-week-year-old uh, 24 fetus. Unwilling to abort the baby, the surrogate mother and her family were left trying to find a hospital where she would be allowed to deliver her baby early in order to allow her to begin cancer treatment. They knew that this, they knew at this stage in the pregnancy that the baby might not survive, but that with the support from the hospital staff, the baby could possibly survive. So this is one of those incredibly sticky and understandably difficult medical situations. The surrogate mom is has an aggressive kind of cancer she wants to save her life but she also does not want to end the baby's life just because her wife her life is in danger and so she opts to have an early delivery and so she's going for the option that she believes is most likely to preserve both of their lives which i applaud her for the fact that she actually wants to deliver early is something that really ought to be applauded. I know that some people would say, well, I would rather that she just allow the cancer to continue to grow in her body and let the, the kid grow and, and get a better chance of survival. You know, it's hard to say. I, I, I think you could debate that. Um, but, you know, the cancer is in her body. And since it seems to be very aggressive, I'm not an OBGYN. I don't know all the circumstances. Maybe the cancer could even spread to the baby. I don't know. But I do believe that you're in a very bad situation to where there are no good options left. Now, the worst option that she did not opt for was terminating the baby and then going about her life with her cancer treatment. She opted to try to do something to save the baby and to save her own life at the same time. So for at least showing that level of consideration, I do think that she deserves our praise. And regardless of that, you know, being in that situation, being in a situation where there are only bad options left, 
you know, you have to feel for her on that level. So let's go ahead and look at the next section of this story, because this really brings into light what I was talking about at the beginning of it. This surrogate was faced with a decision most pregnant women hope they never have to face, saving one life at the risk of losing another. To make matters worse, the two intended fathers, oh, okay, so she's a surrogate for a gay couple. Interesting. Wanted her to abort the baby because they didn't want a baby who would be born prematurely and who may have serious medical needs. Uh-huh. The fathers, that should be in air quotes, by the way. The fathers refused to entertain the idea of allowing the baby if delivered alive, to be adopted by the surrogate or someone else. So in other words, they don't want the baby to survive regardless. They just want you to kill it. Either way. The fathers stated that they didn't want their DNA out there being raised by somebody else. Even one of the surrogate's doctors said they knew someone willing to adopt the baby but the fathers just wanted a death certificate for the child and asked that no life-saving measures be performed on the baby if he was born alive. It is unclear why fathers requested a death certificate, but maybe it was to render the surrogacy contract null and void. Oh my gosh. Since the pregnancy didn't end with them receiving the baby, Surrogates are often paid with compensation throughout the duration of pregnancy with the final payment made at surrendering the child, surrendering of the child and relinquishing their maternal rights, if applicable by state law. There is a special circle in hell reserved for these people. And I would say this if it were a straight couple. The idea that you are so concerned that you would rather end the life out of spite and even if there is somebody else that wants to adopt your baby and you know that there's a family that has opted to adopt your baby despite the fact that they are very likely to have serious medical needs. And you still want to go forward with killing it because that's just what you want because you can't imagine the idea of your DNA being out there. There's a special circle in hell for people like that. I don't apologize for that whatsoever. I stand by that statement. This really illustrates two things. First of all, it illustrates the problem with the pro-abortion crowd. They just see the baby as a product. It is nothing more than a thing that they desire. And just like if you have an Amazon package that's going to be arriving and you find out the product's going to be damaged, you want to send it back. And you ought to be able to destroy it because it's yours anyway. You can do with it what you want to. It's not a real person. It's just a thing. And a lot of gay couples, like apparently this one, they just see the baby not as a person that they actually care about and want to love and nurture and raise. No, it's just an accessory. It's just so they can feel normal. It was the same way I saw a video several months ago of, of a father chest feeding. And it's a guy, but he's dressed up as a woman and pretends to be a woman. And so he has the baby sit there and suck on his nipple, which also child abuse, uh, even though they know that no milk's going to come out because he's a dude. But it's all to make him feel better. You see, if the child has to suffer to make him feel more uh, affirmed and make him feel as though he's really a woman, that's fine. That's just the way that it is. And apparently these guys are of the same mental state because one of the bases of the whole LGBT movement, whatever, is that the world should change to fit what you want. That's why it's not enough for them to have their own pronouns. You have to be forced to use their pronouns or else you're a bigot. And they have to have everybody else accept them because it's about the world moving to fit what they want. And in these two guys' case, they would rather that baby die because they just can't bear the thought of a child with their DNA being out there. Yeah, well, if you couldn't bear that thought, then you should not have, you know, opted for a surrogacy in the first place. And the fact that this motive may actually be because they don't want to have to pay for it. Dude, that's your child. Biologically, you brought it into the world. And by the way, that surrogate is the biological mother. 
So that's not the, they're not the two fathers. One of those guys is the father and the surrogate is the mother. I'm sorry, that science, half that kid's DNA is mom's. And so if you couldn't bear the thought of your DNA being out there and being raised by someone else, guess what? You shouldn't have had the baby in the first place. If that's how you were going to be about it. But again, they're so self-centered. Everything revolves around them. They don't care if this kid lives or dies because the baby is just a cute accessory. I mean, really, they're treating it worse than a dog. Can you imagine somebody saying, oh, I'd like this puppy. And then the puppy arrives and you're like, oh, th this puppy doesn't have the right color pattern that I wanted. You know what? Let's just kill it. Well, why don't we give the dog to someone else? No, I can't bear the thought of this dog being raised by somebody else. You wouldn't even treat a dog that way. And they're treating a person this way. And by the way, that's just talking about the behavior that they're having towards the mother. Let's switch this around for a second. What happens every time there's something, and we've seen this in the state of Alabama multiple times, we've seen it at the federal level. Every time there's something that comes out about, you know, some kind of pro-life legislation or the overturning of Roe, like we saw a year ago uh, this month, what does the left always do? They always show up in protest and there's always at least one group of protesters dressed up in costumes like they're from The Handmaid's Tale. Now, I don't pretend to know a ton about The Handmaid's Tale, but because it's become such a politically charged symbol, I do know the basis of the story. And as I understand it, the basis of that entire story is that women are basically treated as nothing but baby factories. There are men that take women against their will and basically just use their bodies to produce children. And that's really their only value in the society in Gilead, the place where this book takes place. If I'm understanding the story correctly, that's the whole social commentary is that you have men treating women as though their only value is as a baby factory. How is this not exactly that? You've got two men claiming to be the father of this child when they're not. One of them is, one of them isn't. And they're basically looking at this person. She's saying, no, I don't want to abort the baby. And they're saying, you know what? Tough. We don't want the baby. So now you have to do something with your body, terminating it in order to please us. They're treating that woman as though she is nothing but a baby making factory. So why is the left not outraged about that? Why don't you have a bunch of leftists showing up in those uh, red pioneer dresses with the bonnets on outside of, you know, the clinic where this is taking place. Why don't you see that on the news? Because it was never about the women. Never was. And this story proves that. I'm sure that these guys, especially considering they're a gay couple, probably not the most conservative and definitely not pro-life considering their stance on the abortion thing. And yet it's these uber liberal homosexual men that are actually treating this woman exactly the way that every leftist accuses conservative men of treating women. So there's a pretty thick irony in that as well. Let's look at the final piece of this, which is really just heartbreaking, but it's how the story ends, unfortunately. Eventually, the surrogate mother was able to find a hospital who would induce labor and deliver the baby vaginally. The baby was born in the early hours of the morning and died soon after. I often say there are plenty of reasons to get people to see how surrogacy is wrong, is harmful, and is bad for women and for children. This case highlights many of the problems when contracted, largely commercial, pregnancy. So in other words, again, exactly what I was saying. Treating pregnancy as though it is some kind of commercial venue where you're paying somebody for their services. Continues on, the physician in this case has two patients. First is the pregnant woman, and the second is the baby she is carrying. We see competing interest in medical care between the mother and the baby being directed by the purchasing parents and not the physician. The mother wanted to try and deliver early in hopes of saving the baby and being allowed to start her, can her cancer treatments in hope of saving her life. But California law recognizes the contracting intended parents in surrogacy arrangements as the legal parents. They alone can make decisions around the care of the baby, in this case, refusing care. 
Huh. So Uber Blue California that states that their highest value is women being able to do whatever it is that they want with their body. My body, my choice. Well, you know, in, except in this situation where we have to defer to the gay men, one of which has no bi biological connection to this child whatsoever. It's not her body, her choice. It's her body, these two men's choice. How is that consistent with your liberal value set? And these are the laws of California, arguably the bluest state in the country. And yet they would say it's where these uh, red states are, where there's all these evil, Naziistic conservatives, where women don't have choice over their body. I guarantee you that would not happen in the vast majority of red states. Because that's not how surrogacy, surrogacy laws work in a lot of those red states. Now, I'm not really a fan of surrogacy regardless. I understand that there may be some exceptions to that. I can't think of any right now, but I'm not going to delve into it. But the point is, overall, this is a pretty good illustration of how when liberal values start actually trying to manifest in the real world, they run up against reality. And that doesn't work out so well because liberal ideology is not based in reality. It sees these two men as the child's father, only one of them actually is. And it rejects the idea that the woman has autonomy over her own body in a scenario like this. Despite the fact that they say that's one of their core values. And so really what this shows is that they're full of it and always have been. They're not pro-woman. They're not pro-rights. They're not pro-bodily autonomy. They're pro-abortion. Always have been, always will be. They are in favor of death because they are a demonic construct. They are a death cult and they want more dead babies. That is the goal. If that were not so, they would not have the Shout Your Abortion movement. And they would not have this woman who actually is trying to preserve as much life as possible, the babies and her own, which remind you by the... The two fathers, again, in air quotes, in this situation, by making her jump through these legal hoops, they inevitably put off her ability to get her cancer treatments because she waited to try to find a place that would deliver the baby for her, which, thank God she did, even though the baby wound up not making it. But they actually endangered her life and put off her starting her cancer treatments because they wanted the baby dead. And there's no other way to interpret that story. They said they would rather the baby be, be dead. They are a pro-death demonic cult. That is what the pro-abortion movement is. I'm sorry, there's no other way to put it. There's no other way to interpret the data in a more favorable or forgiving way. That's what they are. But luckily, they can be reformed. There is always a chance to turn back to life. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.